Coming up on the DMT One to One Show, episode 58, on the 1st of May 2014, an interview with Neil Cocker, founder of the company Dizzy Jam. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, where we talk uh, to interesting startups and uh, digital music projects every week. You can find out everything on digitalmusictrends.com. Just follow the links to the One to One Show and also check out our weekly news show, which comes out every Thursday or Friday, depending on the week. And this week, it's a real pleasure to welcome Neil, Neil Cocker, the founder of uh, Dizzy Jam. So hi, Neil, and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Hey, good to uh, hear from you, Andrea. Yeah, it's really good. Thanks for inviting me. It's great to have you. And uh, so we're going to talk about the company. Uh, first of all, uh, give us a brief outline or uh, outlook of what the company is all about. Okay, so um, my background in music industry, I used to run record labels. I was a DJ and producer. I sort of DJed all around the world uh, and ran a record label that had a top 10 hit. Um, but we struggled with merchandise, particularly in the electronic music sector. Right. And um, anyway, to cut a long story short, after we closed the record label down, I set up Dizzy Jam, which is an, an, uh, a print-on-demand service for the music industry. So what, what happens is if you're a band or a DJ or a record label, you come along, you upload your design, put it on a, an online version of a T-shirt or a mug or a hoodie, um, share that with your fans. Your fans say, great, I like that. Uh, but I want it in red, medium or green, large. Uh, we print it, we send it direct to the fan uh, and send the profit to the band. Now, how this differs to normal printing is you don't have to print large amounts in bulk up front. Right. You don't have to try and predict sizes and colors. Uh, and you, there's no way you can make a loss. It's uh, always 100% profitable. Um, so, yeah, it was just a trying to use print-on-demand technology to make something that was specific to the music industry. Right. We have tools that make it, um, you know, you can attach MP3s to T-shirts or to a mug. Right. Uh, so, you know, you know, you buy a product and you get a free download, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, yeah, we're just a very, very music-focused print-on-demand merchandiser. And, sure. Uh, so, in that sense, like, uh, what, uh, when did you start seeing that there was a problem there? And, uh, and uh, you know, how did it come to the fore in your mind that you you actually decided to start the company yeah well it was it was i mean we when i ran the record label we were very much looking um you know we would get promotional t-shirts printed up ourselves to go and do gigs and you know you go and do a gig in like i don't know atlanta or or sort of moscow or something and someone say hey i love your t-shirt can i get right. one he said yeah okay give me your email address and they send me an email and then they'd send you an email and you go and get a t-shirt printed at your local t-shirt printer and then you send it to them and they'd have to send you either a check because this was pre paypal um and it was just it was just messy but we never right. really had capital to go and just spend shitloads of money on buying 500 t-shirts or whatever and then never really had a distribution mechanism either so sure. um it was never really a particular we never had an efficient profitable uh form of of uh getting merch out to our fans and i think even more so now merch is one of the only parts of the industry that's making money um for the independent sector and the interesting thing is nobody's really talking about it. You go to any music conference now and everyone's talking about streaming or download or, you know, merch just isn't seen as sexy. And right. yet it's one of the only parts of the industry that, that kind of people in the independent sector make actually make any cash from. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I attended a, a great panel, actually, at South by Southwest that was all about merch. But the fact that it wasn't uh, full up to the brim, considering how good it was, is kind of a testament of the fact that people are still overlooking the sector. <laughs> Well, that's really interesting to me because I looked through the, the entire schedules for South by Southwest and I couldn't see a single panel about merch, but I obviously missed the, the one, the one, the yeah. one <laughs> panel, uh, the, the sort of one of the biggest music conferences in the world. Uh, yeah. There was one panel out of all those hundreds that was about merch and it kind of seems a little bit crazy. And it just, I think to a certain extent, people don't realize that there's there's potential for disruption in that market. There's potential to do interesting things, despite the fact that, you know, we're still dealing with fairly traditional products. That's like a Dizzy Jam mug. Right. And, you know, fundamentally, that hasn't changed as a product for 50, 100 years or whatever. But our methods of delivery uh, and marketing and sales of those are, are quite can be quite innovative. We uh, recently launched something called soundwavemug.com, which where right. you can put you put in your SoundCloud URL of a track. If you're a producer or a musician, you put it into your track, um, uh, sorry, into our website. And then it automatically creates a mug with that sound wave wrapped around the mug. So That's it's awesome. kind of. So it's kind of round here and then you click a button, and you buy it. So you then got a track, you know, your track wrapped around the sound wave. And that just used SoundCloud's API, our API. And so 
of course, we're still just delivering a mug. Let's not kid ourselves that it's anything <laughs> like, you know, world changing technology. But the the method of delivery of that, the the way that we're providing a a, a unique individualized product um, to, to allow people these that's not necessary to sell to a fan. Um, but those kind of uh, attitudes and techniques are really needed to disrupt the tech market, uh, the music tech market. Yeah, and, and it's funny, like you, you know, talking about. Uh, you know, a merge company with an API, you know, it's something that uh, you don't hear every day. So uh, no. when did it strike you that that was an avenue that w was going to allow you to do interesting stuff when it came to physical merchandise? Um, well, it's quite interesting, really. We, um, I came to this business not really being a tech entrepreneur. I didn't right. really, I'd heard of Silicon Valley, obviously, and I kind of had a broad understanding of the difference between tr traditional business and tech companies. But um I didn't really understand the the subtle differences in the way you have to grow those businesses. And it was really only after trying to secure investment to help us grow that I started to understand those subtleties because I was being asked questions by uh, investors and mentors that I didn't have the answers to. Right. Um, so things like the API and things like the way we structure the company and the number of users we, we're aiming for have all come out of those discussions. When I first started the company, I was like, I want to start a website that makes it easy for bands to sell merch, which was, you know, I was a DJ, couldn't sell merch, found it difficult. So that was my impetus. But actually, the more I went down that route, the more I realized that it was the technology that facilitates that process. You know, I had to realize that I'm not a printer, right. and I've never been a printer, but I'm not a T-shirt printer who is using a website to make it easy for bands. I'm a digital technology entrepreneur providing an e-commerce platform that facilitates that process i mean that's a bit of a mouthful but the, the subtle difference is that my main business the, my main product isn't the t-shirt or the mug or the hoodie or the bag it's the e-commerce platform the kind of the printing and all that kind of stuff is almost incidental yeah. um so you know because obviously dizzy jam is a particular service but we've got soundwave mug that allows us to kind of wrap those things around the the the, the mug those that that's the 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 system that yeah. really is unique that allow, and like I say the api you know i didn't even know how to spell api when i started dizzy chance so you know uh it's it's been a, a steep learning curve but we've learned a hell of a lot and you know and now i'm very deeply embedded in the the, the tech music scene absolutely and so uh, let's talk about the technology from the from the printing side as well because i know that a lot of printing companies still rely on relatively old uh, school technologies that uh reward uh of course, volume. Uh, and if mm. you're printing only a few t-shirts, it's going to cost you loads of money. And if you print a uh, hundred sure. or a thousand t-shirts, it's going to cost you a lot less. So uh, what kind of tech, tech do you have on your end that allows you to uh, print items one off, but still, you know, retain in relatively low costs? Okay, so there's a, there's a couple of different um, processes we use. We still use traditional screen printing because that right. has always been the, um, that's for bulk order. So when someone comes to us and says, look, we need 200 t-shirts to go out on the road, then fine, we use screen printing because that's always been the best way to do that. In terms of printing ones and twos, um, we use a variety of different techniques. The main one that's really worth talking about um, and... Uh, it's it's relatively new. Uh, it's only really a handful of years old, but it's 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 the most flexible. It's something called DTG, direct to garment. Right. And if you can imagine your traditional printer that you put your paper into, it's kind of like that. In as much as it sprays ink onto onto the T-shirt, so in theory, you can print a photo in the same way that you could print anything else. It doesn't really matter. You're just spraying the ink onto it. It's actually really really difficult. So. Yeah. And a normal printer that, you know, you can't just go and pick up an Epson printer from your, <laughs> your kind of local curries. And, and, you know, they're like tens of thousands of pounds, um, but they're getting better all the time. And uh, you can do more and more interesting things with them. The flip side of it is it's expensive. You know, uh, I, we've always been transparent about the fact that you will not earn as much per T-shirt printing on demand as you will by printing 100 items. And that economy of scale is the same for pretty much any industry, you know. Yeah. So we're effectively kind of, even though it's done through a printer, somebody's got to hand load that T-shirt into the printer. They've got to treat it with this special chemical first and then put, you know, print it and press a button. And it's a very manual process. So actually it's quite expensive and there's not a huge amount of profit margin left at the end yeah. of any given uh, any given process certainly not in comparison say i don't know you could go and get 
50 t-shirts printed for 250 quid and those t-shirts are like five pound each so if you can sell them for 10 pounds each you double your money yeah um, exactly. with something like dtg you're looking actually for us it's the the raw materials are costing something like five pounds yeah. and then you've got the stuff like the packaging and the st- stuff and you know whatever so a t-shirt retails for 15 pounds on our website or 18 dollars if you're in the states and we allow we set up these rates and then the bands can charge whatever they want on top so yeah for example most people choose to sell at 15 pounds and that means a 25% of the retail price, not the profit, but 25% of the retail price, it actually works out at over 50% of the profit um, goes straight into the hands of the band. Now, if you compare that to selling a CD through HMV, you're getting about 8 or 9%. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're offering uh, 25%, which we feel is like a great deal. Yeah. Um, it's, I think, just some people's expectations around merch sure. is quite you know there's there's a little bit of management but you know you have to, to around that. i guess you have to you know weigh in the pros and cons of not having to worry about overprinting you know that's 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 a yep. key thing if you're a band yep. that is just starting out you don't know really how many t-shirts you need and you you're worried about you know spending money that you don't have to print yeah. you know 200 t-shirts that you're not going to sell then i guess this is a great solution to at least start out and see how it goes Absolutely. And also, you know, there's we've, we've had, you know, we take all the risk, all the stress, all the hassle. I mean, we, we've got bands that have sold thousands of T-shirts through us who've never, ever had to. They've earned thousands of pounds from from our service and they've never, ever had to worry about stock, sizing, colors, anything like that. Yeah, which is um, a big headache. Of course it is. So so for us, um, the really interesting thing is when bands and DJs and record labels start to use it innovatively. So we see some bands who say, right, okay, we've got three or four designs and we can't decide which one to go and get 250 printed off for our latest tour. Let's bung them all up, tell our fans, see which one sells the best for the next like 48 hours. Then we'll take them all down. And then, you know, so they can just, te- you know, we all know that we have theories on what design works and what doesn't, but actually nine times out of 10, our fans surprise us yeah. and we actually realize that we're wrong um so and when you do uh, that you, can, you, you you might also entice the super fans to buy all four so <laughs> of course yeah exactly and you know because there's no cost to creating a product right you, you know our service is 100 percent free and always will be you can only ever make profit so um you get yeah you're right you can you could put a new design up every day or you can put a design up for 24 hours or you i mean the one thing that we've we're not interested in getting into the selling MP3 space because there's, you know, you've got iTunes and then everybody else. You've got iTunes services doing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's just like kind of, the, the, it's a crazy competitive market. So what we're actually looking to do, uh, or sorry, what we what we actually do now is we allow people to attach MP3s to products. So you can attach like a zip file of an album or just a single track or a, an unreleased track. And we're finding that people are using that to almost sell their mp3s right. they're selling an album that wouldn't normally sell because they're attaching it to a physical product sure so i don't know if you released an album normally you'd sell a handful but then people would find ways to get it for free but actually what we're doing is we're giving it they're, they're almost seeing as you're buying the album but you right. get the t-shirt for free you know so it's just the way they choose to package it so whether you know they go away and embed our shop into their site or into their facebook uh, page which we give them the tools to do um and yeah they just kind of they're doing some really really interesting stuff through uh, and finding other ways to monetize their music through physical merch because physical merch cannot be pirated by its very nature yeah and and uh, the second thing that's uh, i guess problematic that uh, i guess you, you guys have to contend with every day is the the question of shipping so uh, mm. you know shipping costs uh, worldwide H- have you seen that's not as much of a barrier as you thought you may have been at the beginning or is that still a big cost if somebody orders from australia and you have to ship a t-shirt there it's yeah we i mean we, it is a it is a bit of an issue we're actually talking some uh some people out in different parts of the world at the moment to to help us fulfill orders we sell a lot of stuff to the states nearly a quarter of everything we do uh, we ship to to america wow. um uh so you know we sold a lot of stuff to america but still we'd like to be able to do it cheaper and quicker you know what you know particularly around christmas and when when international shipping gets busy we start to have uh sort of slow deliveries and that's not good for our customers right um so you know it can take a couple of weeks for something to get to to america and it's frustrating for us and it's particularly frustrating for customers and we don't want to let the bands down because we're we're sure. representing the bands with their products and so we want to do a really really good job and give them a great product sort of as soon as we can so um so yeah you're absolutely right we don't sell a lot of stuff for example to australia um and i think that's not so much to do with the time i think as much as anything that's to do with 
you know what? It just takes a really long time for stuff Together. to get from, <laughs> from from the UK to Australia. And it's just like so. And, and, and the shipping costs are really, really expensive to get, you know, and we, we try and subsidize stuff as much as we can, particularly to America, uh, which I think is why we do very well in America, is we subsidize those shipping costs. So we, we actually take a hit on the shipping costs of the state. We try and make those um, those shipping costs as close to what you would pay if you're in America buying from America, so local right. shipping costs. Um, but that's not sustainable for us forever, especially if we suddenly get a million orders. We can't we're taking a hit on every t-shirt so um we would like to be able to you know i was when i was in austin for south by southwest you know i i went and saw some uh, print guys out there and we're trying to find people who we think can deliver a really really high quality product direct to the fans on our behalf so they can be our print guys in the u.s and they would sure. fulfill the north america perhaps even south america um and you know so i think maybe in a couple of years time we'll have print bases all over the world of people just fulfilling and you know you're hopefully everything is fulfilled within 24 hours and, and sort of on your doorstep because you know fans want that stuff they kind of uh it's very often a an impulse purchase and they want that stuff like quick you know yeah absolutely and uh and we're talking about the fact that you know uh, merchandise is still a relatively dark art and if you if you go mm. if you google you know printing t-shirts uk uh it, it's it's just a mess you know you find all these websites you know some of them you have to email to ask for a quote some of them have an yeah. automatic quote that is crazy expensive and it's just very difficult to organize if you're a band and i'm sure it's the same thing in the u.s with local suppliers so uh yeah it's, it sounds like a great service and i'm sure the uh, people that are listening uh, from dmt are going to go and check it out and hopefully you hope so. will get some bands uh, on board as well and uh, and so on the bands front the last question is uh, how do you how do you get bands to know about the product is it more of a word of mouth thing because uh, of course it's it's always hard to to rank on google in the right place uh, for for searches yeah, and so of course yeah i mean we, we we're a bootstrap startup so we don't you know we don't have a huge marketing budget um and you know i would say 90 percent of the people who've come to us have come through word of mouth right um which has been really really nice because that's you know we've got we've got thousands and thousands of users and that's because people are talking about us positively um and we i like to think it's because we're doing a good job we're friendly guys you know you can find us on twitter find us on facebook uh, you can email me i'm neil at dizzyjam.com we'll answer questions um and we we because we're music industry people um our background is music industry we understand the pains that these bands are going through so um I think that's why we've grown the way we have. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I think it's quite interesting. You kind of look at the big music tech companies, the SoundCloud, Spotify, and whatever, and they have these huge, huge, huge marketing budgets. And sometimes you kind of look at them, go, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have some money to spend? And they go and sponsor a house at uh, South by Southwest and has, spot, you know, put your name on Glastonbury and, you know, all those kind of things that those big brands can do. But, but I think there's a real benefit to growing slowly as well. Yeah. Um, and, not and, and, you, the, and you have your own company and we we own the company you know exactly. which is nice because we you know we we met some people out in south by southwest and they were like hey we like what you do can we can we work with you can we do some things and you know other other music technology platforms and they were like and we said yeah of course and they said uh, so you who do you need to run this decision by and i was like kind of looked down and looked up and said that decision's made you know they, we don't have to run this decision by anyone you know it's yeah. kind of it's just a decision that we can make because we run our own company and we own our own company and that's kind yeah. of rare these days in the in the technology space but it's Absolutely. nice yeah there's a, there's a few companies that do that but uh, they're rare and far between uh, but yeah. no it was an absolute pleasure talking to you and once again thank you the website is uh, dizzyjam.com and Neil uh, thanks so much and uh, uh, anytime you want to come on and comment about anything that's happening in the merchandise space please do give me a shout Brilliant. Thanks, Andrea. And Cheers. thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One show. You can tune in every week uh, for a new podcast and interview with an interesting company or digital music project. Also, go on digitalmusictrends.com. You can sign up to the newsletter on the homepage or go to bit.ly slash DMT list to sign up uh, right from Bitly. Thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week and until next time. 